So hopefully that'll start recording now. Any, oh, there it goes. Okay. Um, right. So sh shall I start sharing my screen, Anshul? And then um, uh, I'll, I'll say a little bit and then uh, you'll, you, you know, you can give us the, the demo of um, the, the finishing off this iteration of work. Yes, sounds good. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, Okay. So, um, so yeah. So we've got a little uh, little presentation here. I wonder if I can get rid of that. Yeah, that's better. Uh, a little presentation here uh, that just goes through what uh, problem needs to be solved. So this is just a reminder for those that maybe are new to this um, this development that we've been undertaking over uh, probably since June last year so sort of, sort of thing so this is a kind of uh, Anshul in his in his spare time uh, giving up his time to sort of try and further this work uh, so I'll just describe what problem he's trying to solve um, there's a little bit about requirements analysis uh, where we are in the project what we're trying to do uh, Anshul's then going to give us a little demo uh, and then there's a there's a sort of um, open uh, time for questions and uh, we'll then discuss the next steps on the project but what I will say is um, Anshul is a very, as as all very, um, you know, uh, intelligent and uh, clever people, uh, we have a tendency, and I'll say we, because I include myself in that category. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Um, but uh, we, we have a tendency to, you know, uh, dive into the, um, you know, the uh, ones and zeros quite quickly. Um, and uh, what I want to encourage everybody on the call, if you don't understand something, please ask there and then. Uh, don't leave it. Just, you know, this is kind of, a, I'm, you know, we're inviting for people to try and understand what's being presented rather than kind of go, I understood it up to a certain point and now I'm lost. <laughs> but not say anything, if that makes sense. Yep. So if everybody's comfortable with that. You're directing that at me, aren't you, Paul? Well, directing at everybody. Not, <laughs> no, I mean, and you're very capable as well. You know, I put you in that same category. Uh, I'm just, I'm just aware that you know, you're not a, you know, in a software engineer in the same sense. But uh, um, so, yeah, here we go. So intros, uh, you, you probably know this. I think most people on the call. So Anshul um, is currently working for Oracle. Still, are you working for Oracle? Yes. Still, that's kind of what he's doing in his day to day. Um, but um, do you want to say a little bit something about yourself, Anshul? Yeah, uh, so my main job is with Oracle, working on hypervisors. Apart from that, my open source contributions, are, uh, I have, um, I'm have. i collaborating with KISP, uh, developing dynamic scheduler. And my other collaboration with, is with uh, Open Research Institute. For that, I'm doing some FPGA work for uh, trans receiver. So yeah, yeah, that's a brief about me. Yeah, and, and just so you know, Anshul, we're we're um, we're sort of developing links with the Open Research Institute as time goes on as well, okay. um, which you may or may not be aware of, but uh, but I thought I'd mention it. Uh, you know who I am, so I'm just someone who's trying to organise uh, open source software collaborations. So work started in July 2020, uh, part of the Open Source Satellite Program. So uh, everything that's being developed will go open source, and we're hoping to do that very soon. Um, but you know, before we get to that point, let's talk about the problem. So um, we need to be able to modify code in orbit. And typically, um, the way this has been done in the past uh, with certain technologies is to upload small patches uh, of software. Um, those patches can be like very, very small, like you know, changing a one to a zero in order to get around a problem. Um, but they can be a, a high risk with that kind of approach of, you know, hot patching uh, software in that manner. Um, the other ways of doing it is uh, to do a task replacement. So that's kind of, you know, it takes a little bit more bandwidth to get the um, the data up to the spacecraft. And there's, there's uh, associated risks with, you know, um, uh, swapping out tasks in that manner. Um, but um, the more sort of kind of safer but also problematic way of doing things is to do a full image replacement so 
that's where you've got one image of, you know, one bunch of ones and zeros, which makes up your program. And now you want to switch to a different set of ones and zeros that makes up your program. Um, the problem being, you've got to completely reset the processor and you've got to start from stage one, if, if you get my meaning. So any context that that, that that software had is kind of lost in that process, which is um, not very, not very good from a um, availability point of view. It's not very good from a um, attitude control point of view because the spacecraft can go out of control in in the meantime. Um, so that you know that there's there's kind of downsides to this to, to this third one. The, the main downside is that you have to upload the entire image, which can be quite slow depending upon its size and depending upon the bandwidth available to you on the RF link. So. Um, we tend, we, we wanted uh, to be able to do these first two uh, approaches, you know, task replacement and software patching. And um, the chosen operating system is free RTOS. It's got a shortfall in the sense that um, it, it, it doesn't really support this kind of um, uh, functionality to be able to replace a task at runtime. Um, it doesn't, it, it kind of does because it has this, this API call called X task create, which can be called at any point. So you could, you know, create a task at any point. The problem being that um, you need to be able to link dynamically the uploaded thing that you're uploading to the already existing software. Uh, and that's the tricky bit. That's that's the bit which we're uh, which we're looking for Anshul to sort of uh, help us with and fulfill. So um, the tricky case is kind of illustrated here. Let's say you've got a um, AOCS task and you have another task over here, gathering historical telemetry, and both of them make an API call to fetch telemetry. And they're fetching that telemetry from this task, this telemetry server task. But you know, you've got a bug in here uh, that you need to fix. So you need to replace this, this task uh, and the problem with doing so is that these links that, you know, th this, this task has a notion of where this function is, as does this one, and that's going to move around now because it's, it's moving from one location to another because you're replacing uh, a task with another. So that's the kind of tricky problem that, that we want to, to solve. Um, the, the project to date has, uh, we've done in iteration one, which is completed in February 2021. Um, we ran two different ELF files. So an, just so you know, an ELF file is like an executable, sort of. It's it's a, it's a format of a file which describes where the functions, are, you know, the, 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 the software functions are going to be located. Um, and it's typically the output from the compiler and the linker. Um, and um, normally what you do, well, normally, uh, if, you, if you have like a free RTOS distribution, you only have one ELF file. So, it, you know, you build all of the code into one lump, which is one ELF file. Um, now, that poses a problem because we want to be able to upload more than one thing. So we wanted to demonstrate the, um, you know, working with two ELF files. So one with uh, one lot of code and one with another bit of code. Um, and then kind of mashing them together on um, on something representative uh, to dem demonstrate that that's possible with free autos uh, running as well. So we did that and Anshul demonstrated that with ChemU, which is the, um, the sort of uh, ARM simulator that runs on an x86 or a Windows E or Linux E sort of environment. And then there's iteration two, which hopefully we're going to complete today. Uh, so that's running one executable, executable task on target, um, which is software including FreeRTOS. So it's quite a lump of software, you know, including FreeRTOS and lots of bits. And then we're then Anshul's going to demonstrate the upload via UART of an ELF file that includes only a single FreeRTOS task. So this is onto a real target now. So we, we're, we've removed ChemU. And we're actually doing this for real and a real target. Um, and the target he's using is a um, STM32 Nucleo board, similar to the one that uh, Ben is using, that Jamie's using, that I'm using. We're, we're all pretty much using the same sort of hardware. So, so in effect, that ELF file will replace part of the other bigger ELF file. That's the intention, yeah. Right. Okay. Just I'm just I'm following you, so I'm I'm all right so far. Just good. Good. <laughs> 
Yeah, and then um, execution of that newly uploaded task without resetting the processor. So no, no processor reset required. It's still running the code it was running. And I think, um, yeah, and, and so this is the scope anyway of, of the iteration. Um, the only thing that we haven't uh, done so far is to make that um, that uh, open source. So we haven't got to that stage yet. We have everything in a private GitHub repository. And as you might know, we've also engaged with Richard Barry along the way, who is the author of uh, Free Artos, who seemed quite interested in what we're doing. Um, he's gone quite quiet since we did our first demo, which is a bit of a shame. So I think maybe one of the actions is to try and follow up with him. So I'll make a note of that now. Yeah. Uh, because I think his involvement is is really interesting and because this is something that could be useful outside of uh, the open source satellite. Uh, how, does, we, how does that work with our Free Artos? Because obviously, is there somebody who own who who basically looks after Free Artos and only lets in things that they're happy with? Because obviously, you're then releasing this that works with Free Artos. How does does do they have to sign off on this, or can you just release it and and people can use it with Free Artos if they want to? Well, it's it's completely um, it works without uh, modifications to Free Artos. Um, right. So it's it's kind of standalone bit of code. Okay, um, okay. So we could release it um, under our own banner, you know, um, without really affecting Friatos. But Richard Barry has an interest in it and may want to, in some way, incorporate aspects of it right. more, you know, into Friatos as, as as a thing. If if you get my meaning. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a good reason to 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 talk to him. Plus, obviously, he has got a lot of contacts in the embedded industry as well. Uh, okay, so uh, just going through this demo then. So as I said, uh, stage one, we'll upload free RTOS uh, and a base task one. So that comes in from STM Cube, which is our development environment. It goes on to this to this development board. I've got the wrong one pictured here, but but you get the idea. This is a STM32 development board. Uh, stage two is we upload a replacement task over UART. So that goes across. So both of them have been built with the compilers and the tools with STM Cube. Uh, and then we run the newly uploaded task. And I think there's a, there's a point, correct me where I'm wrong here, Anshul, where we're running both tasks simultaneously. Yes. And then we basically replace the base task one with the newly uploaded task. So we have this kind of stage three, which is, uh, you know, where we're, we're, um, we're at both tasks are actually running. So, so how do you, sorry, it's Ben. Go on, you go for it first. Then. I just to ask what, what, what it means by running both tasks at the same time. Um, yeah, so it just means it, it, it means what it kind of sounds like it means. It, it, it's basically just both tasks running simultaneously. Um, so I, they're actually physically it's... separated. That, you know, when we say replacement, what we mean is we're uploading a replacement task to a different location of memory. So, so it doesn't so... mean that the other one disappears, it's still there. So I, I I guess the first one because because I'm I'm worried about you know who who's the master you know yeah. if you've got two things running so yeah. I guess the first one because it's dynamically linked to the the tasks using it they use that one so even though the second one is running it's not linked to anything and therefore can't get in the way and cause confusion yeah. is that I was hoping I was getting there with my understanding. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, as, as it stands, they can use resources simultaneously. They can do things uh, independently. Um, so in, in the case of a AOC, let's say we were to make this a real sort of, you know, take it to, the, to, to, to a real situation where we have an AOCS task and we want to replace it. We probably wouldn't do this, which is to to, to run them simultaneously for a time and then replace one with the other, we would have a point where we would transition from one to the other and not have a situation where two things are trying to do the similar things, if you get my meaning. This is just for the demo purpose to make the audience understand that two tasks are uh, executing simultaneously. Then yeah. one task will replace the other task after some after a time lag, and then only one task will proceed. So it's just for the demo purpose. Okay, so in the in the, if you were doing this um, in real life, as, as Paul says, you would basically upload it and hand over almost like immediately um, yes. to the. Okay, okay. 
Thank yeah. you. That, that, yeah. that puts my mind at rest a bit because I was a bit worried that, you know, we'd have contention or, or you know, several things would be happening and it would all get out of control. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, it, it just kind of, as you see the demo, it probably helps you to understand what's going on a little bit better if, if okay. you have that point three in there. So it's really more for a demo purpose, really. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think at that point I will hand over to Anshul. I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, so, Paul, how do you want me to go? Uh, shall I go through the some of the slides that were there earlier? Yeah, to... sure. So I think you've got yeah. some additional slides. And as, as I yeah. say, guys, you know, <clears throat> please ask questions. Uh, I will force myself to as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is the part that you showed actually uh, just to go over the requirements quickly. Uh, uh, one of the basic requirement was we don't want the reboot process. That's highly unwanted because all the context of all the other tasks that are in the system that's removed. Um, Sorry, Anshul, you, are you sharing a screen? Uh, it'd be good to. Oh, it's not there. Let me. Yeah, I think I am not sharing. So um, I will move this out of the way. Can you see now? Yes. Requirement yeah. page. Yeah. So uh, one of the one of the most important requirement was we don't want this complex reboot process to happen. All the tasks will uh, will lose their context. Many CPU cycles are wasted, so we don't want that. Along with that, we want that the software should always remain in an up to date state. Uh, so uh, and third one was that uh, all these things should happen with. Uh, with limited amount of bandwidth because uh, ultimately we have to upload the patch from the ground station to the satellite. So these were the three basic requirements based on which uh, I focused on uh, my designing part. <clears throat> so uh, design consideration, as I mentioned, small footprint and program memory that should be there. Uh, another thing is that uh, free RTOS, uh, it, it's quite a huge monolithic blob, uh, so that has to be separate from the application binaries or the task that we will be uploading from the ground station. So those have to be completely different part. Uh, otherwise, the whole purpose is lost. Um, so in, when we, so you say you're saying you sort of build them independently as different L files kind yes, of thing. Yes, yeah. that's very important uh, because um, in, in the main system module, and as as we have discussed discussed in the past uh, on the satellite, we have main system module. It will be running telemetry and everything, and everything will be running uh, maybe on top of free RTOS or along with free RTOS. So that should remain stable. And whatever we want to upload, whatever tasks we want to execute, we should be able to transfer those tasks from the ground station to the uh, for, to the to the satellite, and and at runtime those tasks should start executing. So it should be a kind of plugin architecture. That was my design consideration again. Uh, another important aspect was no changes should be made on free RTOS. So whatever uh, I have to do, it has to be based on top of free RTOS. So <coughs> that's what again I have taken care. Of. And then again, minimum performance overhead, and uh, uh, I I do I divide uh, free RTOS and my solution into different components. So uh, I have free RTOS layer. Then on, on top of that, I have some important system modules that are always needed, and then we have application modules or application binaries which we can transfer from ground station. So this is an implementation overview, just to give you a high level overview. So application binaries are compiled independently from the system binaries. Uh, application binaries are position independent and relocatable. It's a software term, but it helps to place the binaries in whatever memory location I want uh, on the card. Yeah. So do you do you so for the, the real application, do you need to have a, a binary for each of the tasks, the application tasks, or just one binary for all of the application tasks. It will be better to have uh, different application binaries for different tasks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I think from from our perspective, what we need to do is identify those components which are likely to require changing, um, you know, and, and then separate them uh, architecturally into different um, compilable artifacts uh, so that we, 
you know, the, the obvious one is AOCS, isn't it? Um, uh, they'll, they'll, there will be others as well, some payload stuff perhaps, uh, and maybe even some, you know, service layer things like telemetry capturing and, and, and things like that. So there's, yeah. I guess, I guess if you get that architecture wrong and you mm. have something that is a, a bigger ELF file that c consists of several things, several tasks, you'd have to upload that entire ELF file because, you you know, I'm, I'm just thinking two years into a mission, you might suddenly find a bug. I know, you know, sometimes you do find, you know, because you just mm. happen to end up in a place where you didn't expect to. And so on something that you consider robust and heritage, you might still need to make a, a mod. Yes. But I guess you just make a mod of that, the bigger blob, rather than that blob. It becomes that big if you, if you get your yeah. architecture slightly wrong. Yeah, and I think it's worth pointing out that if if that were to be, let's say that 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 um, bug was found, let's say even in the the FreeRTOS operating system, uh, and we needed to make a, a change there, I would imagine the uh, and correct me where where I'm if I'm wrong here, Anshul, but my feeling is we probably have to then you know revert back to uploading uh, everything you know, yes. uh, rather than uh, trying to patch a particular task on top of FreeRTOS. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that said, FreeRTOS is, is pretty stable um, as far as software goes. Um, so the things that are likely, much more likely to be wrong are the things that are more sort of mission specific or um, or new. So um, yeah, I, think, I, th I think we have to accept that, you know, there may be a very rare case where we just have to do a full code upload. But what we're doing here is trying to minimize that down to the very, very rare cases. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the whole intention. Yeah. So uh, and uh, it's if, if you want, if you think that some of the binaries are quite stable enough and they are, they should be part of the system, then you can make, then you can compile them along with free RTOS. So you have that flexibility also, then they will be as part of free RTOS and others can be loaded independently. So uh, system binary is compiled and loaded and it's uh, it's execution start. Then system uh, system binary loads the application binary if the application binary has been compiled along with system binary. Otherwise, um, then the application binary uh, execution start. Then next step, if we want to upload any application v1 binary, then it's uploaded from the ground station. The app v1 is registered, allocated and linked then task state of app, the old binary is transferred to app v1. Then the old app is halted and app v1 starts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, if, if you look at the diagram, the left one is ELF, then free RTOS, that's the main system boundary. And then we have this task one ELF, and then we upload another task v dash ELF and task one is halted. The state is transferred from task one to task v1 dash, and then task v1 starts executing. So what are the main modules? Uh, important thing is uh, uh, while while designing, uh, uh, there, there was always an option of using, um, as Paul knows, there was an option of using jump tables or other approaches. I went with ELF because it allows me to control all the aspects of a binary. Uh, ELF is the format uh, that compiler produces and it gives an instruction to the OS. Uh, OS uh, reads this ELF binary and then based on uh, instructions given by the compiler and presented in this ELF file, it takes care of linking, it takes care of allocation, it takes care of all the aspects where it will execute. So I wanted to control all the aspects of this binary because it's quite critical path and that's why I went for ELF binary. And now what all things all the things that OS does with an ELF binary, now my module is doing before handing the binary to free RTOS operating system. So I have my module for memory allocator that will read the ELF, allocate the memory, whether it's dynamic, static, whatever ELF says, I will do that. It will, I will register it with a uh, binary tree. I'm using a binary tree to keep track of all the application binaries that I am running and then we'll link all the tasks. So basically all the things that an OS does, I am doing in my own module so as to keep control, keep complete control of, keep con complete control and track of all the application binaries I am executing in my system. 
And when we're talking, uh, uh, just going back to your previous slide, yep. uh, uh, Anshul, about uh, splay tree and yep. uh, red black tree, um, could you just give us an overview of what, what you mean by that? Yes. So when, when, and when a task is registered, then uh, I keep an entry in the splay tree or there is, there is a splay tree and a red black tree. Then each of the memory modules, memory areas that it allocates, again, I keep them in the, in the tree. And this helps me for a quick searching and replacement. Okay. Yes. So it's a way of it's a way of uh, organizing memory yes. from you know what you what you're interpreting from the elf file. Yes. So the elf file stay here. The stack is here, and the yes. um, let's say the the heap is here, and the you know the, there's some I don't know some memory some memory for this function required. Exactly. Malloc is um, here. Yeah. Local variables are here. Uh, there are there can be as we as we as the size of modules grow there can be multiple heaps multiple memory multiple malloc calls so all these things and it's the same thing that's used in linux kernel linux kernel also uses red black tree to track memory allocations well, i would say what why is it called red black tree is there is there, is there like two different branches and yeah one's if good are, one's bad or something no it's it's not uh one's good or one's bad there are some properties and it's to keep it balanced it, it helps in easy searching and sorting okay. quick yeah yeah, and this is why we got Anshul doing this. <laughs> he is a master of everything Linux kernel, which, uh, yeah, that's that's beyond me. Thank <laughs> you. So yeah, uh, code flow, it will be better understood. Um, okay, let me go through it. So ELF binary is inserted into the memory. It's again a bit of repetition, but just at high level. ELF binary is inserted into the memory. The system as a whole, how it recognizes, it recognizes all the tasks and their entry points via ELF binary. The system registers all the tasks to a task manager. Task manager is an entity. Again, it's it's a part of system layer that sits, that sits above free RTOS and it makes the entries into the red black tree and splay trees. So that's the role of task manager. It registers all the tasks that are executing in the system. System is able to create new free RTOS task with, now once a task is registered, I call X, task create with all the memory areas, stack and heap that I have allocated and pass it on to free RTOS by using this X task create. After that, all the scheduling, everything free RTOS takes, free RTOS takes care. I am not responsible for it. But whenever if task replacement needs to happen, I call again free RTOS OSS function to halt the execution of the task, then do my juggling of memory areas and then again, I call a free RTOS API call to start the execution of the new ta new task. And then again, new new task is handed over to free RTOS domain. Mm. And, and one one thing I should mention, uh, we do have a um, uh, a risk. I have an action to sort of log the risks on on the on the projects, and we've got one about um, MPUs and things, which I think is a low risk. But there's another one, uh, basically, because one of the goals is to to minim you know, one of the one of the aims is to minimize the amount of information that needs to be uploaded when we replace code. Uh, now, ELF files aren't binary files. They're um, well, they are binary, but they're they're sort of uh, they're, they're perhaps bigger than than if you were just to upload the you know the dot bin file, if that makes any sense. So the compiler spits out different files. There's a .bin file, which is kind of the very low level. This is exactly what you know the the, the processor is executing. And then you have an ELF file, which includes a, more information that can be used, let's say, for a debugger uh, if you include debugging stuff, uh, or for this function, which allows you to to understand how the the memory needs to be allocated. A bin file wouldn't give you that information, so that's why um, Anshul is, uh, you know, wanting to use ELF files, and that seems sensible. the The downside of that is that ELF files are bigger than bin files, so we we kind of we need to recognise and track that risk that you know that by <laughs> you know we might end up with something that allows us to efficient you know. Uh, to, to replace things at runtime, which is advantageous uh, from a disruption point of view, 
but we might not get that benefit of um, the uploads taking a, a low amount of time because the L file is bigger than the bin file. So, um, you know, one option is to perhaps compress the bin file or uh, sorry, compress the L file or something like that on the way up and then decompress it before we, yeah. you know, use it or something like that. But we, we need to, to sort of track that risk um, as we go along. So, sorry, Anshul, uh, sorry for disturbing you. No, no, that, that's absolutely valid point. Uh, yeah, uh, we need to we need to also figure out how much of a difference it is between a bin file and an L file. And uh, second point will be yes, as you can say, uh, if during compilation I can f I can pass on some flag to reduce the size of L file. That's another option we can try. And compression is another thing that you have mentioned. Uh, yeah. So, so this is. Uh, just high level diagram. So create TRC is basically task. It goes from here to here. If it's unregistered, then we go from here. It needs to be registered. Once it's registered with this API called task register, task register is a call in task manager. Still, it has not reached free RTOS domain. Once the task register is done, then we go for task alloc. Again, it's my call, task alloc. Once it's allocated, task link. It's still not in free RTOS domain. It's in task manager domain. Once it's linked, then it goes OS control. And here, this at this point, I call X task create, and now it's OS control, and then it can be suspended, resume, whatever it does. So that's mm. how. So, it so, so it the works. task link is the the key thing. That's where all the dynamic linking happens. So until yes. that point, the task is in effect isolated from the 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 areas that it needs to talk to. So it, you you can't exactly. Use it. Yeah, OK, cool. And that's how I'm able to execute two tasks simultaneously till this stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so just going back to that diagram, yeah. then, Anshul, the, 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 the sort of um, uh, horizontal lines at the bottom there, mm -hmm. where you've got task free, suspend, resume, those mm -hmm. are uh, kind of, the, you know, if I were to draw a line where free RTOS kind of is in control, it's kind of just above those um yeah, yeah just align yeah. there yes these so, all are states once it passes os controlled then all these are in control of reactors okay and so everything yeah. above that is essentially yes. what uh, what you've written yes yes yeah yes. okay everything here is mine yeah so yeah as uh, paul mentioned so this was the current phase goal uh application binary task executes, it reaches an inconsistent state, and then we wait for it to reach in a consistent state. Uh, then suspend original task, allocate updated task, link the updated task, copy the memory location, copy all the atomic pointers and everything, whatever is needed. Start the task, put it in OS control state, and start the execution of the updated task. So this was the code. Uh, just again, a uh, high level graphic representation. So we have this migration process two, three, four, five task code. This is code V1, V1, task data. So let's call it task state V1, V1. The task is executing. Now a request comes to replace the task. So we wait for the task to reach a checkpointable state. That's an important state. Uh, this is a state where it's not making any calls to any of the libraries, it's in its independent state. So we wait for it to achieve a checkpointable state and then uh, the replacement happen and then we have code V2 and then task state V2, V2, V2 dash. Yeah. So, so with, the, with the checkpoint uh, state, um, yeah. so is that something that when you're writing a task, do you need to make a call to say now the task is in a checkpointable state? We need to define checkpointable state while we are writing the task. Right, okay, okay. So it, that's something in addition to what you might all you know you might have in free RTOS. So yes. uh, where would my I mean would it be in I guess would it be in like a, in in the kind of high level function of the of the you know the entry point to the um, no typically you'd, you'd enter a task and it would go around in a loop. So I'm guessing mm. at the at the high level sort of C function where you you know when you're coming back out to this to this main function, mm. your checkpoint your call might be there to sort of say CPO 
I'm, I'm, you, you can, you can do stuff now. Yes. Um, that's, that's what you need to insert into your task in addition yeah. to whatever free art Aussie things you might have. Yes, that's right. That's so, right. This, this, so I guess this is where the interest, interesting bit comes in terms of the AOCS task, if you want to replace that, because mm -hmm. obviously that's going to be called at, well, could be called at 12 Hertz. So you're mm. not going to have much time where it's in that checkpointable state. Mm. Mm. And I guess it's, it, I guess, I don't know whether, obviously the demo today is like a, a functional um, demo. Yeah. I don't know whether you've done any um, performance in terms of how long, you know, how, what chunk of time do I need from that checkpointable state to be able to flip to the new one? Once you are able to achieve checkpointable state, it all depends upon how much data you need to transfer from old state to the new state. Mm -hmm. So mm. it, it will it will be dependent on that. Okay. Now, how soon can you reach to checkpointable state? Again, it, it depends how you have written your task. Mm. If it's making a lot of function calls and in that function call, you are spending a lot of time, then that's a bad thing. Mm. But if you are making a function call, returning it immediately, then you can quickly reach to a checkpointable state. So these are two important things we need to take care while we are writing our task. Mm, okay. okay. Yeah, and, and just so you're aware, Anshul, the way um, the way we're hoping to write this this task, and, and this this might be of interest to you, mm -hmm. we're um, open to use Simulink, um, uh, which is a you know maths tool, yeah. uh, which also has the capability to spit out C code. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we develop a, a, a Simulink model uh, with some associated MATLAB code and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what, um, and this is why Ben's on the call, really, uh, as well as Suffi. So these guys are, are kind of, you know, doing this stuff. Um, and uh, that spits out a, at the moment, the way we've got it is, is one kind of C function, which is called. Mm -hmm. It does a load of maths and then it returns. Mm -hmm. So there isn't an intermediate point where, you know, it comes back and then goes back in again. It just yeah. kind of does what it does and then comes out. So I'm imagining that what we would end up with is, you know, you're in your Simulink code mm -hmm. doing your stuff mm -hmm. and then you come out and then you might try and enter your, your checkpointable exactly. state. Exactly. There's no point going in between while it's doing the task, then whole system will be corrupted. That doesn't make logical sense. So yeah, once it mm -hmm. returns, you have the results, then of course, yes. Yeah, and, and I guess at that point, Ben, all of the the um, the, the integrators, all of the, you know, the values in the Simulink code would be uh, at, a, at a, a stable state. Yes. They're not, there's, yeah. no, there's no intermediate nastiness going on. Yes. I suppose you do it between between loops, wouldn't you? So you do it where maybe you're just your last set of actuator commands have gone out, but before you've executed the new loop where the new set state is coming in, that'd be the yeah. end of the that'd be when there's no more code being that's when the, the, the full similar code would have been run through. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think yeah, it's it's important to understand. I, I can put a checkpointable state even when you have made a call, but at the time of copying your your stack, your stack, your local variables will not be in updatable state. So it all depends upon your requirement. I have no, no problem. I can define a checkpointable state whenever you want, but then you will get old stack, which you don't want. So just mm. think of from that perspective, what local variables, what stack, what heap you want, want to get transferred from old state to the new state, mm -hmm. and then define checkpointable state based on that. So uh, I'm just kind of thinking this through then. So mm. what, we, what we've got here is something that sounds quite intricate and quite clever in the sense that not only are we replacing the task, mm. we're also replacing the cut or maintaining this, the um, context of the task yes, state in terms of its, yes. its, its, its local variables and stuff. Yes. Now, the question I would have is if by modifying the task, you know, you introduce more interfaces or you interview, in, you know, you change the um, the nature of the way the stack would be create you know be used because you're introducing new functionalities. I'm guessing what we're doing is we're saying okay, I'm going to take the stack and I'm going to kind of port it over here where the where the new stack for the new task is, mm. so that it can it can sort of run 
the new um, the new code, uh, yeah. but with the coefficients and you know uh, integrators as they were mm. in the old code, right? Mm. So it right. means that your AOCS is actually still running in yes. the same context, in the same way that it was before you replaced it, which is very yes. clever. Very, yes. it's it's very um, ambitious, I think. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, what well, I, I like it, uh, I, um, I'm just sort of thinking through. Mm. I, I guess there's a limit to how much you can change. You know, if you were to completely re-engineer your AOCS code and then try to use this method, would would it just, would you just end up, there's no point sort of trying to, do, do you, you know, do you have to, do you have to write a, a bit of code to translate the stack or the, 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 the data into the new task? Let's say that you wanted to introduce a new variable for... Uh, integrators or or, yeah. or on some new loop or something like that yeah. that required a, a data structure which was different yes. from the old task mm. would you have to have something that translated the data from the old task into the format of the data for the new task look uh, what i'm translating is suppose you have new variables introduced into the stack so that will be there in the new task all variables in the stack will be there in the new stack. Similar, all the heap memory areas, memory areas allocated in the old task will be carried forward to the new task. And the pointers that were pointing to those memory areas, those will be updated with new addresses. Okay, mm. so, so so it sounds like if, if your stack increases the number of variables, that's fine because yes. although the new one has, say the new one has 12 and the old one has 10, yes. you, you you copy the 10 that are in the old one into the new one and then yes. the new one just already has the two extra ones that it it, it, it it comes with because it's a new task. Yes, that's right. Okay. Now, yeah. Paul, does that answer mm. your question or you want more detail into that? Suppose I, I, uh, guess, uh, I guess it'll uh, become uh, clearer when we get to the point of you know, having a slightly more complex thing, yeah, yeah, that we're trying mm. to replace. Because then what I'm imagining is that there might be occasions where, I don't know, let's say that uh, Ben needs to introduce um, some kind of new algorithm or something. Yes, that's in order right. To get around a problem. Mm -hmm. So the nature of the heap changes. Mm. Or the nature the, the of the heap, what does that mean? Or the, heap the, the is way. A heap. Yeah, okay. Um, what do I mean by that? Mm. What is heap? Well, it's like allocated memory. Yes, um, allocated, just allocated memory, yeah. Because we're going to copy it from the old task mm. into the new one. And update pointers, remember that. And update the pointers. Yes. But let's say that we remove some in the new task. Let's say that, say that there's now something so, that was there is no longer there. Yes, yeah, that so means rather the pointer than having is extra much. stuff, oh, sorry. Yeah, having less stuff. Having less stuff, yeah. yeah. So that means uh, the pointer is also not there. In the new one, but it is in the old one. In the new one, the pointer is not there. In the old one, pointer is there. Yeah, mm. yeah, I, I need to, I need to, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I can see how I, I can, to yeah. Yeah, because I can see how you can add things in because that's really yeah. cool because you just yeah. overwrite the the, the old yeah. bits. But as I guess, yeah, pause. And I, and I wonder if it's I don't I don't know. Say say uh, we had four wheels, and uh -huh. then one of and then one of them breaks, so that Ben has to only use three wheels. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're using might be shrunk. So mm -hmm. yeah, got that's it. An yeah. Inter that's interesting. Yeah, not to divert things too much. Just a quick comment. So in terms of sort of task uploads, but again, stick with AOCS. Um, if we were to just generate the whole AOCS software from Simulink, obviously it will shuck out like one, it shucks out like one function that can be run that is the full, you know, obviously inside that function does all the detail, but in terms of what the task is doing, it's just running that one function, which is the whole AOCS task. Mm -hmm. um, if we did it that way, and you had to change like one tiny bit of the algorithm, you'd have to change that whole, you have to re-upload that whole task, wouldn't you? Which is the whole AOCS software. Um, I don't know if that's too big, something like this, or, or would you would, would we need to split the AOCS into into separate tasks? If that if I'm making any sense at all. Mm. Um, 
Well, you know, I don't I don't anticipate the AUCS task being particularly big um, in terms of, you know, bits. I think it, it's likely to be because because everything, it, I mean, Fiatos itself is not very big. Um, mm. So I'd imagine it would all be quite small. Um, it would that's one be of the, over the top to replace the whole thing just for, you know, a little line of code. For a tiny update, yeah. And, and, and certainly in, in the um, presentation I gave previously, there was a sort of another method which, you know, people have employed previously, which is a small patch. Yes. We are patching yeah. little bits of code, little, you know, literally bits of binary. And, and sometimes you can do that and sometimes you can't because it depends upon yeah. the nature of how you're doing it. Yeah, um, and the only thing I was thinking about is, is I've seen, you know, sort of the advised way of dealing with the model-based stuff is to not actually touch the code at all in terms mm. of what's generated. You always go back to the model, if you see what I mean. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that, that sort of lends itself to not doing the patching if you follow that exact, you know, if you follow that guideline. Um, yeah, I, I think yeah. what I've seen pre people previous do previously is basically, uh, uh, you know, the, the way it would probably work would be you have your Simulink model, you generate your code, yeah. and um, and then you tr you compile your code into a binary. So then you got your binary, and then let's say you want to make a, a very very small change to the code. So what you what you could do then is change your Simulink model, uh, create your your C code, compile your C code, and now you've got another binary. And what you can do is compare the two binaries, and see what the differences are. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, and then you know, you can make an assessment as to whether you, it's sensible to mm -hmm. make a patch. And when you do it, you've got to be really careful. Um, yes. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think you have to do it on a case by case basis in that instance, because some yeah. some changes will be patchable and some won't. And it was always whenever we did it, it whenever we used a patch, especially on something like the AOCS, it was very much a last resort it was not right. something that we would like to entertain just because it leaves you open to so many risks whereas if you if if you can replace the entire task mm. it's a lot it's it's better defined it's more controlled mm. you're less likely to make an to make yeah. a, an, an error but having said that the, the 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 idea of having a checkpointable state is also good from a patching point of view because if that exists then you know that in this way if if the task is in this state then then that's a good point that you could patch something right yeah um as well as doing this task replacement as well um so it may i think it would de-risk slightly um the kind of problems that we've seen previously and in in doing this kind of live patching type solution mm. which i don't think isa would ever ever no, entertain no, no. No, no. <laughs> But, no, no, um, I, I agree. Having having a point where it's basically saying I'm stable. Yeah. You, know, you can do with me what you want, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And one yeah. more thing, I was just uh, thinking over that. So, uh, when 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 a new task is uploaded, uh, mm -hmm. I go through the very because the variables that are defined in the old ELF and the new ELF, whatever you want to reuse, those names will be same. So mm -hmm. I, I go through the tree and then copy only those ones which exist in the tree and are there in the new ELF. So if you have reduced, like, like you said, you know, earlier you're using four wheels, now you're using three wheels. So the variables related to the fourth wheel are not there, though they won't be copied to the new task. So if right. you have reduced the variables, they won't be copied over. So you're fine. Yes. You, you're fine. covered with both with increasing yes. and reducing. And cool. decreasing, cool. yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, I guess then, uh, I. I uh, by the way, uh, I, you know, I'm a typical software engineer. I'm always trying to find the problems, right? <laughs> but, uh, but this, this is really, if we could get this to work, it would be fantastic because yeah. it's, it's, it's proper live patching, you know, maintaining the context between one thing to the next. It's really efficient from a um, operational point, operations point yeah. of view. It's challenging from a coding point of view, which is why I'm glad you're here. But I'm, I'm sort of thinking about, okay, let's say we went from we want to add in some functionality mm -hmm. so the context of let's say we went from uh, it's an artificial situation but let's say we went from three wheels to four wheels mm -hmm. something strange like that yeah. might never happen i don't know i'm just trying to come up with something that some makes other some satellite sense. comes along and sticks an extra <laughs> wheel in for you yeah some martians <laughs> come down and add a wheel <laughs> so uh <laughs> 
So we've we've now um, got three wheels. All the context of the way that they were running, all the integrators and everything, are all in the software. It's all good. Mm. The fourth wheel mm. uh, has no context because mm. it has never run previously. Mm. So yeah. I yeah. So that from an AOCS point of view, that's an interesting thing, Ben. Um, quite. Well, how you deal with that, I don't know. But uh, and maybe this is an artificial situation. I, I'm not really sure. Maybe it won't have a context, but it has its own stack because that's what it has been defined in the code. So it will have its local variable stack, and that's what I can provide you mm. with the new version. Yeah, Once I you start using it, its context will be created. Yeah, I think the only way that the only I think it's very artificial. The only um, point that I could see that happening is um, so for instance on tech demo, demo sat we had um, four wheels and we had a demo wheel we had a fifth wheel um, and that was um, a different uh, we, we, we changed the bearings blah, 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 so it was different and, and we were flying it to see how it worked mm -hmm. so we could do some experiments where we would just spin it at very low speed without putting it in the control loop because the other wheels could compensate and that was fine. But there became a point where we needed to add it into the control loop. Mm -hmm. And so that that's what would would be your 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 context there, Paul, is where we put it in. But that again, it's a very, you know, it's a it's a one off case, probably. Yeah, it's just whether there's some other things a bit like sorry, Jamie, could yeah. you uh, mute? Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, it's just um, sort of thinking through, maybe not that exact. It's just anywhere where we're adding functionality into. Well, maybe, maybe we should just have a, a think about that. Yeah. Um, because it might be that, you know, in those um, uh, few number of cases, we mm. just say, well, we'll just, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe upload the code or, or do something different because it's yeah. such. It, it, because you, I don't think you will ever get a one yeah. size fits all. There, there will always be occasions where you just have to revert back to something yeah. else. And I think we need to make sure that we we want to keep this as simple as possible um, and have it very well defined and not try and expand the boundaries too much. I mm. think we just need to be careful that we just don't, you know, do that. Yeah, but I, I think. think it, but I think it is key to understand the what 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 um, opportunities we may have a problem with so we can mm. list them and go this is where we can't use it are we happy that those yeah. are so small that it, it you know it doesn't cause a problem yeah exactly it's, it's just knowing that the boundaries the limitations yeah. of what this thing can yeah. and can't do yeah yeah anyway, so sorry far, I'm uh, still understanding you so this is good good <laughs> yeah and we'll let you carry on Angel, because yeah Running out of time now, so I'd, yeah. I'd better shut up. No, this is good. No, this is good. <laughs> no, I, I, now I will move to the demo. Yeah, so these are the slides that you already covered, so it's fine. I mean, <clears> it's <throat> been a very useful discussion, so, you know, it's been time well spent. Uh, this is the code. I will run it from here. This oh, now is, you've lost me. <laughs> uh, this is the command with which I will transfer the binary from my system to the card via UART. At present, it's UART. Later, we can decide upon FTP, uh, TCP, IP, whatever we want. So I will run the code. Uh, the code stops in this loop, just for understanding. Then it will wait for some number of, it will wait for some t amount of time to get the binary, and then the processing will happen. So I will do that. And this is the UART screen. Here you will screen the, here you will see the output. And here you will see both tasks are executing simultaneously, and then one stops, other starts. It's not pretty, but it's console output. That's the best I can do. Yeah. So, oh, that's FPGA. God. So, yeah. And now it's actual running on actual card. stops here it stops here now i will run transfer the binary and now let's go to the console so the 
binary is getting transferred. And it should output something, yeah. Altitude control task started successfully. First task has started. AOC is second, altitude control is first. Both are executing simultaneously. So is that why you can see the sort of now repeating? It's updating, um, yeah. And now it's can, only ACS. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Paul. Now it's only AOCS, yeah. Okay, all right. So yeah. you could sort of see a time when you're getting printed. So one one task was printing something to the to the uh, UART at the same time as the other one. Yeah. So it was kind of interrupting the flow of uh, characters. Yes, yes. Alt attitude, altitude control was one and then AOCS, AOCS was another. Yeah. And now yeah. you've just got the AOCS. Yes, yes. Okay. So yeah, now it will continue. So that's the whole point. And okay. um, yeah, I, I won't go into the code. So yeah, that's fine. So yeah, that's all. Excellent. Now, any questions or anything? Now it's an actual and target board. MPU is not a problem. I have tried with both states. And, and what sort of size of binary or ELF files are you uh, transferring at the moment? Yeah, let me see. Uh, this is about uh 9k yeah. yeah and free autos is around nine eighty eight that's the main system binary mm -hmm. yeah so so that's yeah. that's the size of the l file the binary file would be a lot smaller than that but yeah, sorry, yeah. I, meant, I meant the file that we were transferring across. So. Yeah, this doesn't need yeah. to be transferred. This is already there. But yep. yeah, this is the app one. So that was the nine. Right. So, okay. Yeah. But I think the actual free RTOS binary mm -hmm. is a lot smaller than um, 988K. Yeah, it's more let's like, see. It's more like. Uh, uh, yeah. But I guess. I app guess... image bin file is only 484 bytes. Mm. Yeah, so. So it goes up to 9K from like 400 bytes. Yeah. Oh, so that's a bit of bloatware, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets but quite a bit bigger. It's but, but they might a lot bigger. Yeah, it might be that there's ways of um, producing oh. the amount of information because actually yeah, yeah. you've probably got I, the debugging information in there at the moment. Yes, have you? yes that's, yeah. that's, that's true. But here the bin file is a lot bigger. <laughs> I don't know. All how. right. Oh, that's a huge difference. Uh, it's big. <laughs> yeah, even though it's even strange. though technically it's got less stuff in it. <laughs> yes. So yeah, we need to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, it might be um, it might be a load of um, you know, zeros just padding. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, the L file doesn't have padding in it. It mm -hmm. just says put this to here, put that there, put that the other. Mm -hmm. Whereas the bin file can include, well, it will include, mm. you know all padding information and everything so actually it might it's smaller it's smaller Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take that risk strike that risk off the risk register then <laughs> excellent excellent so yeah so I, uh, it'd be interesting to see because obviously when we're running the aocs and it's going it, you know our maximum target is 12 hertz it'd be interesting to see whether we can do it at a 12 hertz rate Again, yeah, it depends upon amount of data and the processing yeah. power that we have. Yeah, and that's why I, uh, yeah. I, I know you can't you can't do it now, but it, it's something mm. that we need to bear in mind. And I don't know whether, Ben, that's an interesting thing, whether you could, could you uh, almost throttle back the AOCS at a point you wanted to upload a task? That would be an interesting question. That is so an interesting that, question. Yeah. You know, you, you, don't, you don't lose attitude, but you're, you've slowed things down so you can get the task time in, so. Yeah, that'd be an interesting thing too. I, I, I don't simulate, know whether that's then, possible. <laughs> I'll, I'll think about that and see what Yeah, okay. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting yeah. close to having a, a bit of a, you know, a full loop in terms mm. of the algorithms. Um, so perhaps it's something we could actually, you know, test properly mm. soon. Mm. Yeah, um, maybe I'll put it, I'll, I'll tell you what, guys, I think we're kind of moving on to the stage where we're talking about, you know, what the scope is for the next iteration and stuff. <laughs> so um, I'll share my screen again. I will stop sharing. That was excellent. Um, that's really, really good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah it, yeah, it is excellent. And uh, and 
it, it, it's it's really nice to have you know quite often you work in you know when you work in the space industry you're working with people who are yeah. space people but you're not working with people who are like experts in operating systems you know uh, and and that's the beauty of what we're doing here you know you're an expert in operating systems and hypervisors and all of this stuff which um you know most space people won't touch with a barge pole so uh <laughs> <laughs> so that's why this is really great um i have this uh this kanban here um it's got this outstanding action to make things open source mm. um in uh, so i think um there's a few there's a few bits there but i was can just going to add sorry can i, I can, can yeah. i ask a question on, on making it open source so um obviously the demo worked which is brilliant um and i guess paul paul you have, and angela if you if you sort of come together and review the the testing um, aspects of it so that it, you know you're both happy that it's been through because obviously if we're going to make it open source it, we, we need to have made sure that we've done sufficient testing to make sure that it's robust mm -hmm. and no disrespect but you know obviously we need to do mm -hmm. that so has that has that been done no we, we haven't this hasn't gone through like a type two development cycle this is very much type one because it's um it's all to do with um uh, you know, it's like an experimental thing. Mm -hmm. So what I what I was gonna do, I was going to um, release it, but with you know, th there's there's no um, it, just being upfront about the level of testing that it's, that it's got. Uh, you know, there's no warranty on it. <laughs> yeah, there's no warranty. There won't be anyway because of the license agreement <laughs> no. on the open mm -hmm. source stuff. But yep. um, mm -hmm. certainly, you know, just being upfront about the, the nature of this software. If we, you know, I think probably in the roadmap to get this, you know, on the satellite, we probably want to do some um, more, you know, unit testing, get the code coverage up, and all of this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, but I guess I guess what I was coming, what I was trying to mm. get is not not, yeah, it it doesn't have the the full software um, testing, but presumably you guys have discussed what testing it has had, and you're happy that you know that has made that that makes sense. Not in great detail, to be honest. Okay. Um, okay. But um, it might be an idea to do that. Yeah. Even if so it's only, I think only, even if it's only a conversation to say, yeah. you know, what what have you done? What test cases? Just so that at least you're aware of of um, where we are. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so I was, I was gonna, scares me. That's all. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, j just in terms of, uh, I don't want to lose uh, what I was thinking. So yeah, sorry, I think sorry. the. No, no, it's fine. Um, so in the backlog, I'm going to add on AOCS task replacement demo, which will probably involve Ben and possibly yeah, Sufi as well. Great. Um, so in the future, we could actually put that into an iteration. So we're trying to actually demonstrate a full blown AOCS task yep. being replaced by another one. So and I'm maintaining good. context and carrying on. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. actually you know, we changed the algorithm and uh, the loop is running and now it's still running uh, with a different algorithm, you know, and it's seamless. Wouldn't that be beautiful? <laughs> that would be a thing yeah, of nice. legends, I think. It was sort of forced us to think about all like, I mean, we've talked about it briefly before, but it forced us to think more about how we physically would integrate, you know, the simulate codes in the real software. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we talked about, you know, the structures going in and out in terms of how you should give it its inputs and outputs. Um, mm -hmm. It actually make me think about that in much more detail. Mm, mm, mm. Is that That's something? Good. Is that something that we, although it's on the backlog, uh, being aware obviously that that Ben will have to go back to university, <laughs> does have to go back to university. I mean, we're going to take away his pass, so he has to go back to university um, at the beginning of October. Um, yeah. Or is it something that we, you know, that we can demo when Ben comes back for his Christmas party? I'll be in contact with you, you know, you know, you know I'm going to the end. Yes, I know, but when, you know. Like realistically, yeah. Yes, realistically. Yeah. So we just need Don't. to make, just need to schedule that in, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I did have some suggestions about what we might do on the next iteration um, of this work. Uh, so, at the moment, as I understand it, and correct me where I'm wrong here, Anshul. So when the when the when the new task is being uploaded and running, 
it's uh, it's not dynamically linking to free artos. It's uh, it's it's using a, effectively a jump table to uh, or something equivalent. Is that right? No, it's dynamically linking. It's dynamically linking. Yes, that is the whole purpose. Yeah. Look at okay. that, we've ticked that task off already. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is, yeah, yeah, so if I make a function call to, um, I don't know, uh, printf from uh, from my binary, my my existing binary, and then I, I create my new function, uh, oh, sorry, my new task, and that's got a call to printf, uh, th this code is able to link the two calls to printf to the same thing. Is that right? Explain it again. All right. Because um, because I, I know one of the main the main features of this in this demo is to print things to the serial port. Mm -hmm. So you've got a kind of um, you know print to the serial port uh, function call, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got that going on in the uh, binary that exists in the big lump, the first binary, you know, the mm -hmm. big elf file, mm -hmm. and then you've got another uh, call to the same function in the mm -hmm. new elf file. Mm -hmm. So when you upload that new elf file. It is your your code is dynamically working out. Okay, that's calling printf no, or no, you know. No. That's where that's where jump tables. Yes. Oh, that's with jump tables. Okay. Yes, right. Now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and and I think there was uh, something that you were. Uh, I don't know how to express this. Then maybe I'm. I got it. Part. I got it. We had a discussion with uh, Andy, uh, who is in New Zealand, and then we identified this action item during that call. Am I yeah. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's. It's because uh, I think you had a, a thought about how you might be able to do that with the linker. Yes, there there yeah. is a arm provides a complete detail on how to dynamically link to the base OS. So yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, I know about the problem here. Yeah. Okay. Is this expressed correctly? Get upload binary to dynamically link to the base image, e.g., free RTOS API functions. I is, think now is, I understand it. Yeah. So it's fine. It is right. I don't need to change this. No. no? And, and um, I, I feel like that would be a good one to get into this next iteration. Uh, yeah, I don't know that, if you yes. feel the same. I agree. Yeah? I agree. And also uh, uh, carrying over heap. Right now it's just stack. So carrying okay. over heap from old task to the new task. OK, so that heap. But yeah, that's that's the thing. OK, yeah. So um, but but maybe hmm, I don't know. Maybe what we could do is open source what we have, uh, including some instructions on how to how to demo it. Yeah. Um, and that's the sort of high priority. And at that point, tag it. And, and, and there's probably another action to to go through testing. Uh, testing in yeah, uh, what uh, Andrew's saying. That's it's probably right. uh, so uh, me. Yeah, open source uh, should be, I think, high priority because I'm planning to. I, I wanted to discuss this with you. I'm planning to demo it to Japan uh, embedded conference in December. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that sounds absolutely fine. Um. And I'm sure. So, so I think that needs to be the priority. And may, maybe yeah. what we actually do is just make that the goal of this iteration. So, this and this go back on to the backlog. So, we literally, we just have an iteration which is all about making it open source. No, I think uh, that doesn't make sense. Before December, I want to get this ready. I will try to get this functionality added. That that one there as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Okay. So, how do, how does this sound? So, and then um, <clears throat> investigate the MPU on M7 core and impact. I think you've done that, right? Yeah, that's done. No impact. No impact. Uh, have a look at tasks being replaced that are called by other tasks. See if there is a ways to linking the replacement task given the change in location. So that one's on the backlog. I don't know if you can understand that. I'm just trying to marry up, yeah. you know, what's in the backlog with what we should put in for the next iteration, basically. Uh, have a look at the task. Being All 
I think with this, mm. it may be that we would want to use OS calls for all interactions yeah. between tasks, and that then gets around this. Maybe, uh, yeah, interaction with OS and interaction between different tasks. Do we want interaction between different tasks? Well, um, Andy advised not because what we could do is have the interaction between the tasks go through the operating system. Yes. So you'd use queues or you'd yeah. use some kind of, um, you know, no direct calls mm. between mm. one task and another. Because mm. I think to do that, you'd have to build them as one big blob anyway. Mm. So, um, yeah. So I think, so maybe yeah, that, can, yeah, I think this, this needs to change focus slightly. Um, yeah, OK, so we'll leave that there. Because, uh, uh, and another thing is if we want to, if you want to change it so that it's interaction between app and, and the OS, then it's already covered by the get uploaded binary to dynamically heap that part. Yeah, yeah, it'll be already there, yeah. So then there was, um, you know, malloc, handling yeah. malloc and things like that. But these are part of heap task which we have just added. We just added, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it might it might be that this all falls into the sort of heap stuff. Yeah, heap stuff, yes. Okay, 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 all right. Great, so I think we've got, you know, an idea for the, for the next lot of work. Um, the priority making it a sort of open source and we want to do that, you, well, you want to do that before yeah. December. Yeah. Um, any thoughts, anyone? About time scales and things like that? No. <laughs> so, uh, sounds good. I mean, I mean, should we, should we try and, uh, if it's December, should we try and sort of, you know, make this happen for kind of a, a November time frame? Yeah, I will aim for that. Yeah. November November time frame for, for iteration three. Yeah. Do you need any more help? I mean, do, do you want any more collaborators involved? I, I guess the answer is probably no. Yeah, no for the time being. But uh, once it's made open source, if anyone wants to contribute, more than happy. But yeah, otherwise I will proceed on my own. OK. Is there anything, uh, Anshul, we can be doing differently to support you in what you're doing? No, it's, it's all fine. All fine. It's all good. That's yeah. all good. Well, um, Angel, I think it's uh, it's a really good demo. Um, I think it's been, you know, I think from where we've been before as well, just in terms of, you know, what we've done today, this, this you know, has been a lot more uh, good. For, it's been better for, for those you're presenting to, I think. I don't know if everybody would agree. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, I found it very useful. It was um, I know you had to dumb it down, but I found it, 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 it useful and I actually understood what you're trying to do and how you're doing it. And uh, yeah, I thought it was it was it was very useful for me as well. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, what's happening? I think so. Does this maintain the context uh, between resets of new tasks that are uploaded? So if yeah. I upload a new task and replace an old one with a new task, and then something happens and the whole system has to reset. Does it maintain the knowledge that it's uploaded a new task that it needs to use? If it's a reset and if it uh, wipes out volatile memory, then of course nothing is preserved. If the volatile memory is preserved, then everything is fine. I mean, if RAM is preserved, then everything is fine. It's a good point, isn't it? I mean, Maybe there's a way. You're still muted, mate. Sorry. Um, maybe there's a way of uh, you know committing what we've done here to non-volatile memory in some way. Yeah. As well. Um, so if, that you like, so, like that. so that yeah. So if I have to power cycle the OBC, for instance, mm. it goes back to the state that I was in after I had uploaded that new task because you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to necessarily have to upload it again because mm -hmm. you put it in there for a reason. It's a good catch out, Jamie. I hadn't thought about that. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's like you put your system in hibernate. Everything goes into non-volatile and then when you uh, after when it comes back, everything is there. But again, that that's that's again a totally different problem mm -hmm. to address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big one. Yes, that could be quite tricky. Uh, we'll give, good, you, good, we'll, we'll, we'll cool. give you a couple of months to do that. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> We'll check it into this iteration, okay? Yeah, yeah, <laughs>
Um, but yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good shout. Um, so I've added onto the backlog. Add commit to non volatile memory so that reset power and power cycle maintain um, new task context. In what context? Uh, new task. Yeah, link. But if the old task. context is not there, new context doesn't make any sense. So even now we need yeah. to save the old context also. Everything. Uh, it, it's it's a big it's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I've, I've just added something into the backlog there to, yeah. so that we can we can just not lose sight of that in the future. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So I think we've got uh, an idea of what we're aiming for for November and. Um, it just really just remains me to say I'm in awe of your, uh, you know, uh, software engineering prowess. Uh, I wish I was as clever as you. Um, uh, if you want a job, and uh, you know, if if I if I get run over by a bus, you're very welcome to have my job. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you'll find there'll be random buses being driven around Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the balaclava on his head. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Anshul. And uh, yeah, uh, it's it's really really good uh, effort you, you're putting in there, and um, I think it's going to be valuable not only to op to OSAP but to the wider free Artos community as well. Great. Yeah, thanks Great. for giving me this opportunity. It's wonderful. And any plan? Uh, anything has been finalised for our rideshare when we are flying? Mm. Yeah, we we were um, we were unsuccessful, unfortunately, in getting a. Um, uh, some funding in uh, uh -huh. that we put oh, a, a grant okay. we put a grant proposal in um i think we found out last week or the week before yeah that we, end of july i think maybe yeah we were unsuccessful unfortunately in getting that mm -hmm. grant funding there, there are opportunities coming up and uh, john has some every day is a different thing <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, so there's there's something that we we um I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about these things, to be honest, Andrew. I don't know. Uh, so I just say something. Okay. Okay. All right, then I will. No, I don't. <laughs> but it, there's, lo there's lots of the opportunities <laughs> continuously coming up that John John looks at, and um, he's looking at it and saying, "Okay, can, well, does this fit with OSAT? Does it fit with maybe something else?" Um, so the answer is no. We don't have an update. Well, uh, we don't. It's not a good update. The update is we didn't get a load of funding. Mm -hmm. so, but I think the, the key thing is we're pushing forward because when we get an opportunity, we want to be, you know, as, if we can be further down the line, then that mm -hmm. that's great. So we're, you know, we're still moving forward a pace to try and get the, 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 the project moving forward such that, that when we do get these customers, there's, there's less to do than, yeah. you know, mm. previously. So. Got you. Brilliant. All right, well, I've got to go and have my lunch now because I'm hungry. Yeah. Well, I Thank thought that was a really good much, meeting. Guys. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers then. Thank you very much, Anshul. Thank Thanks very much, much, guys. And right. uh, yeah, no, that's you soon. Cheers then. Okay, bye.